Hello, everybody, and welcome to another mystery box function challenge. In the purple mystery box, there is some math, and your challenge is to figure out what that math is. Today is a Friday, so this math is going to be particularly challenging. If you'd like to try it out, use the link in the description. And when you have an answer or a guess, come on back and see if we get the same thing. All right, well, let's get started today. See what we've got. Okay, so zero gives us two. Um, let's try a one. one. Gives us one. Okay, how about a two? Oh, and two gives us some, um, looks like a non-repeating decimal. Huh, is this trig? Um, I'm not sure. Let's try a three. And another non-repeating decimal. Okay, so maybe this is some kind of... Um, exponential or or some kind of logarithmic thing uh, or maybe a rational function of some sort hmm let's try one well, let's try four we'll keep going hmm. so four gives us zero hmm let's try five and now it's going up again. Is this some sort of trig thing with a, a multiplier to make it pretty pretty shallow? It doesn't exactly have the shape that I would expect from that, though, from a, a sine or a cosine function, but maybe something's being done to it. Uh, let's try some negative values. I'm going to put in a negative 1. Oh, all right. So we're getting that not a number error. And usually when we see that um, with these these equations, these these graphs, we're talking about a square root of x. There might be some other occasions where that could happen, but uh, that's the prime one that we've seen in the past. So let's try a couple more negative values just to make sure. Uh, let's do something further out. Whoops, negative 6. Okay, so negative values are just off the table. Let's keep going to the right then. So we we're at five, let's do six. Hmm, okay, and how about seven? Wow, how about eight? Goodness gracious, what is going on here? So I'm still thinking we have um, we have this uh, a square root involved here. Um, we would get numbers like that, but what exactly is being done to the square root? Let's try nine. Nine, we get one. So let's think about what would happen if we took the square root of of nine. Uh, what would happen? Uh, so square root of nine would equal three. How would we get to 1 from that if we're just starting with that basic function? Well, we could subtract 2. So this might be the square root of x minus 2. Would that work for some of these other values? Um, so this, ah, the square root of 4 would be 2, and we were, were at 0 there. And then the rest of these values, I guess they would make sense. So the square root of um, 5 minus 2 would be some decimal. The square root of 6 minus 2, 7, 8, all of those would be some decimals. Uh, so that all makes sense for this part of the graph, the, just this part. What is going on here? Hmm. So this one, 1, is right on. So if we took the square root of 1 and we subtracted 2, so that would be 1 minus 2, sorry, 1 minus 2 would be negative 1, and we've got a positive 1. Let's think about what would happen if we did 2. So the square root of 2 minus 2. So that would be 1.41 whatever. And then you'd subtract 2 from it. And you'd get a negative 1 point something. Or sorry, a negative point, you know, around 0. 0.6. Negative around 0. 0.6. And, oh, and we've got the positive around 0. 0.6. Huh. So it looks like something different is happening on, on either side of this point where it hits zero. I think we are subtracting two. It makes sense. But we're getting positive values here. 
uh, well, we're getting positive values everywhere. So maybe there's an absolute value involved in this as well. Uh, okay, so I think this portion is right, the square root of x minus 2. What if we put an absolute value around that whole thing? Because then only positive values could come out. Even when this is less than 2, it would take that portion where um, this, this square root of x is less than 2, so you'd get a negative number, and just flip it up to the positive value. I think that's what's happening. So when you put in a 0 here, the square root of 0 is 0, minus 2, then take the absolute value of that, you get a positive 2, and that's exactly what we got here. Okay, I, I think we have it. I think our function is f of x equals the absolute value of the square root of x and then a minus 2. Wow, okay, so let's let's just go ahead and see. I think I think we've looked at enough points. I'm confident about this. I mean, we could try one more, but the interesting ones are in here. Uh, the rest of these are going to correspond to the square root of x minus two. Um, well, let's, let's put in, let's put in, let's say a 16. What would we get if we get a 16? So the square root of 16 would be four minus two is two and the absolute value of that is still two. So put in a 16. And there's two, so that part seems to be right. Is there any other negative value that would be, well, there aren't any other negative values that would come out right on the dot. So I think we've, we've looked at enough of these points in here. I'm gonna reveal, ah, there it is. So it's the absolute value of the square root of x minus two, and we can graph that. Isn't that a funny looking graph? So, uh, you know, what the absolute value does is it takes it where it would be negative and flips it upside down. So it's, it's like you get the mirror image here. So this is, Really, this should go like that down, down to to meet there. If if that absolute value wasn't there, curious. Well, how did that go? I think that was super hard. Did you think square root? Did you think absolute value? Let me know. Thanks, everybody.